Hey you. Get no you. Yes you. Are you tired of the endless rat race here in the West? Apply the brakes. Extend your middle finger. Fed up watching your hard-earned cash vanish into the bottomless pit of endless bills and debt. Hey, do you mind paying for this? I don't have any cash. Sure, I'll just put it on my credit card. I'm never gonna pay it back anyway. Cause I have $30,000 in credit card debt. When they call, I tell them I can't pay it back yet. Now, whether you're a seasoned retiree, just looking to soak up the tropical vibes, or a fresh-faced adventurer, seeking refuge from the tight grip of the Western debt trap, <laughs> The Philippines has something for everybody. But when it comes to building in paradise, where do you even begin? Now I'm sure that many of you have been tantalizingly close to taking this leap to reinvent yourselves and embrace a whole new chapter of life yet only to find yourselves hesitating at the 11th hour. Yes, change can be scary. <laughs> There's no doubt about it, but the only thing standing between you and your wildest dreams is the courage to say yes to the unknown. Hey guys, so in today's video, we're going to be diving a lot deeper into the world of building in the Philippines. So firstly, we'd like to kick things off with discussing the most crucial first step, which is always finding the right builder. And then from there, we'll explore the challenges of material availability, uh, navigate the intricacies of things like building contracts and Another big thing is the elusive quest for finding skilled professional labour. But of course, before we go into all of this and unravel the mysteries of construction in the Philippines, the most important of all of this, and that is of course the costs involved. See, building your dream home in paradise sounds idyllic, but the question is, is it financially feasible? And then of course, what about all those hidden expenses that could derail your budget faster than you can say blueprint. So guys, grab your hard hats and join us as we look for these answers together and discover the truth behind building in the Philippines. So, where do we begin? Where to start? Finding the right builder. From our perspective and the way that we did it, how did we find our builder? We were pretty lucky to be honest. We were searching online, Facebook, and any um, recommendations from the Philippines, mm -hmm. Philippine relatives and friends. But then um, we found this guy on Facebook advertising his own company. We started chatting with him and then he was pretty responsive. And we thought like, oh, this guy is cool. He's responding to us quickly. So we give it a try, we called him, and then we spoke about our plans. Yeah. And that's, that's how it started. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, and that can be quite a big uh, deterrent for a lot of people because the main way that you'll actually find these companies and these builders um, is usually on Facebook, right? So in the Philippines, especially in the provinces like where we're building in uh, Leyte in Ormoc, there's not necessarily official websites because people don't really like to pay the fees for like the domain and all the hosting services that's right um that you sort of would get in a western country so if you think it looks a little bit dodgy it's actually not that's a pretty common thing that they do there they'll just advertise their facebook page as uh in our case bgdm construction or you know latey building services or architectural whatever it is um so it's pretty much up to your own judgment after speaking with whoever you're speaking with, uh, getting the vibe and a feel for... That's helpful. Please. We'll cut this bit out. Probably in a rush to get his McDonald's. He's hungry. Where were we? Uh, what was I saying? 
like it's pretty much up to your judgment whether your your gut feeling is all right with the person you're talking with over Facebook or whatever social media profile or yeah account yeah that's right so I mean most of them will advertise their previous projects and you can look through a, a list of what they've done all of their Facebook posts because that's the main way that they actually advertise uh, their skills and what they've done what sort of services they offer um, and after we had a good look through his Facebook page uh, we did our own research um, in Philippines you can also look up the registered yes. engineer uh, qualification number of people that are actually qualified engineers if it's so, legit yeah, yeah we can actually legit. verify it online if uh, let's say her registration license number is mm. registered so um, we'll link that in the description below the actual site where you can go and look that up in the Philippine uh, in the Philippines registry in their database so that's a really good tool for you guys to use to make sure that somebody actually has their engineering certificate um, so yeah we pretty much found him we discussed a lot of different plans with him many different budgets the first few houses that I sort of I designed um, they were way too expensive and we couldn't afford it we were just the appetite was a little bit bigger than our pockets um, <laughs> so yeah and that was all free of charge he didn't charge us any money to actually go through all the drawings and the quotations which was really really good um, that didn't cost us a cent until we finally um, put the nail in the coffin and we just decided this is the this is the design that we're going for this is the house we're going to build and then you pay your the first is a 30% down payment and then you pay another two portions of 30% and then the final 10% is usually the engineers cut which is mm. 10% based on the total figure of the um, total sum of that part of the contract so yeah and I remember we had our contract also um, what is that notarized notarized by the lawyer, yeah. the lawyer which is another good thing to do especially mm -hmm. if it's the first contract I would suggest doing that because it's obviously legally binding and it makes it a lot more a lot more official and if you're still sort of testing in the waters then I definitely suggest at least on the first one to do that it costs us a fair bit of money though that like was 20, like 20 20,000 20, pesos. 20, pesos which I'll do the conversion in um, uh, Australian dollar and US dollar but I think that works out to be about 400 mm. and 450 470 bucks uh, Australian something like that but um, Again, I'll do the conversion for you and um, we'll give you a look at how the actual physical contract looks in this video a bit later on. Now, mm -hmm. this leads me to my next topic. So, we sort of gave you a brief overview as to how to find a builder and how the contract system sort of works. Um, so, we'll dive into that a little bit more. But basically, should I get an engineer? Should I get an architect? Um, if you can plan the house yourself, that'll save you a lot of money. Is it worth getting an engineer? And how is the contract actually structured? So, as we said, you pay a 30% deposit. Um, that'll buy the first amounts of materials and then you just progress payments like you would pretty much anywhere else uh, throughout the build um, but should you get an engineer um, personally we think yes depending on how much money you actually want to spend on the house whether you're planning it as a living situation that's going to be your forever home your retirement home whatever you plan to do basically what an engineering uh, engineer allows you to do is to get insurance on the property so if anything was to go wrong, like uh, earthquake or typhoon damage, anything like that, if you have an, engineer's, uh, an engineer build the house and you get that engineering certificate with his license number attached, you can basically submit that to any Philippine bank or insurer and you can cover the entire house for any, uh, any damages, for any costs involved in damages. So mm. um, again, that's up to your discretion how you choose to go about it. A lot of people, they build a house a lot cheaper using local builders um, but there are caveats attached with that um, what else would you recommend honey when it's sort of comparing the difference between using an engineer or using local builders mm. well that's really up to you whether your budget can really um, cover with the engineering cost because obviously it's gonna cost but if you want to use local builders well you have to communicate closely tightly to someone whether it's your family, your friend who will oversee the construction of your house. Mm. But then with an engineer, you can pretty much discuss discreetly to him and he will be the one to supervise, to direct, manage, yeah. manage for all the building and construction of your house. So that's a lot 
of um, like you know stress free from us yeah that's right that's what we've sort of found because um, our brother-in-law and sister-in-law they built their house uh, just with local builders um, and our other sister-in-law was overseeing the project but then of course you've got to factor in the fact that they're Harley <laughs> Davidson it's just we're getting everything here today all the noises yeah so when it comes to using local builders like Leia, our sister-in-law, she had to organise all the materials. So it's a pretty big burden um, on someone. the person yeah, that's helping you out in that sense because they have to physically go to the store, they have to withdraw Order. the cash, you have to transfer the cash and, and it's just a big monitor process. Monitor also the, the supplies. Monitor the supplies, make sure yeah, they deliver it on time and when it's needed. Whereas the engineer takes all of that out of your hands and he organises it. He's the one that basically deals with the stress there. So if you're doing this like we are remotely, if you're there, it might be a different story because you have the time to organize everything yourself and oversee it. But if you're doing it remotely like we are, for us it made a lot more sense to hire the engineer um, for that very reason. And also because they have the understanding of calculations, dimensions, cubic feet, cubic meters, mm. you know, how much of what material they need and so on and so forth. So I think that for us, using an engineer honestly saved us more money and stress because whatever mistakes that are made are actually on the builder on the engineer and that comes as no expense to you now of course right. you know sometimes it works both ways sometimes you might have to give a little bit extra or if you make a change that's going to cost you a little bit extra and the budget is always going to blow out yes it's and always going to if blow there out. is something that we don't, didn't like the engineer is pretty much happy to rectify it and and redo it according to our likeness yeah, that's right speaking for ourselves like our, our build has been absolutely fantastic through the moon so we're going mm. to link his facebook page in this video just so you guys can go and check it out um, and also an example we also use like a local builder for our for our fence for our yeah. fence and then um yeah he's charging every bit of changes. Yeah, every little bit extra or a little bit of change who wants a little bit more and it's just this kind of mutual negotiation and this back and forth it's not as legitimized as having a structured contract um, with it, all the stipulations basically printed out in ink you know so yeah it just it's a much more stress-free way of doing it and as anybody knows who's ever built a house in the past it's it's a stressful process nonetheless whether it's in the west or if it, any country anywhere in the world it's it's tough you know it's not easy they're big projects um, and they consume a lot of time and resources uh, so yeah if in, in our instance I think an engineer was the way to go which leads me on to the next segment of course is the communication so the language barrier and the communication and <laughs> where things have gone a little bit wrong for us um, simply because things were misinterpreted or mistranslated throughout the exchanges. So if you want to touch a little more on that, honey. Yes, with the communication, um, working with an engineer, we can pretty much like discuss directly to him. Like Daniel is going to just discuss directly with an English um, language discussion. Mm. And then um, with the um, local builders, of course, um, we'll have to translate it. I, I didn't mean to say that they won't be able to understand or won't be able to talk but it's just a less stress when you're talking with you know someone who can discuss thoroughly using the um, yeah, that's English right. language so that is going to be inevitably a barrier no matter where you're from or where you're moving to um, that's always going to be something that you'll have to make an allowance for and that could cost you a little bit more money um, in terms of rectifications and listen to you know just miscommunication between both parties um, but other than that it goes back to being able to judge the, the person the person that you're employing for yourself the team that you have and the kind of vibe that you feel if you think that they're an honest person if they're a dishonest person mm -hmm. at the end of the day look you're going to have to take a risk if it's something that you really want to do um, and do it according to your means whether you're available to be there to oversee most of it or if you have to do it all remotely like we are working full time you know trying to do a little bit of youtube as well so that you guys can can see sort of how it works and that average everyday people that are working class and in our at, in our age group it is doable it is possible um and yeah it's just something that you're going to have to deal with and something you'll have to judge for yourself which of course leads me to the most important topic that everybody wants to know is the cost associated now we've blown out a lot 
<laughs> we've blown out a lot i don't want to give away the costs yet we'll we'll do at the very end when the house is done um we'll just give you a final tally because i'm hopeless with documentation but you've been tallying pretty much everything most um, things like the, um, we'll probably still be missing what 15 15 percent unaccounted for costs at the end i'd say i'd say to be safe but, for me, but most things you've been you've been pretty good with writing it down yeah, yeah? I, I, ha I have to keep like an excel file with tracking of expenses like from the first contract second contract and up to this third and last contract so we can literally see the budget and really um you know find out how much we, we can spent. afford how much we can still like progress yeah with and, the building i mean there's also been purchases off lazada like we bought you know a lot of stuff which like we have obviously transaction records in the bank for it but you know we haven't factored that in it's not written down anywhere in our spreadsheet like we bought these automatic gate arms for the for the swing gates yeah you know they were like eight hundred dollars or twenty eight thousand pesos or something and a whole bunch of like you know pool filters pool pumps filtration all, filtration yeah all that sort of stuff um the sand filter and we bought you know light the fixtures light and the fixture. uh, switches as well all the switch plates which are not your standard like um switch mechanisms they're all push like mm. um uh pretty much like a touch screen kind of button so it's not a physical mechanism uh, so all those extra things you've got to allow a lot more money for mm. and those are just luxuries that we chose you can go with the standard, standard standard which is in the quote and they pretty much do quote for a finished product um, but that reminds me they do it in two different stages they do like a construction stage quote and then they'll do an architectural so usually in the philippines at least from my experience that's split it's not like here in australia or in the west where you just get this is the house it's going to cost you this from the start to finish with an allowance it's kind of done construction and then allowance which is like the physical structure of the building and then the architectural we also option to get our windows done separately um that's outsource them to another company different expense because which cost us three hundred and fifty thousand or something no, it's the... running 400,000 because of... Um, shower screens and the door. Shower and screens and mirrors. mirrors. Yeah, so, and then by the time if we get, I think there's a few extra bits and pieces, we'll get them to for do the curtains blinds, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. we'll probably be running half a million there just for that. Uh, so, yeah, so you guys can already start to get a picture for what it costs. Um, and we have by no means built like a simple house. You know, it's... We've kind of gone a little bit crazy. We figured, you know, if we're going to live overseas and, you know, we've worked so hard and spend our money, at least we want to enjoy what we live in. Um, we could have made it a lot more simple, but, you know, you only live once and if you're going to enjoy it, just enjoy it. Obviously, don't go, you know, spending beyond your means of what you can afford, but we know that we can do this progressively over time. So that's exactly what we're doing. We want to enjoy the house. We want to be able to look around and just go, we can live here forever. Like we can honestly live here until, you know, touch wood the day we die. Well, this is steel, so to find some wood. But um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so, you know, that's the approach we took on it. And it's up to you how you choose to approach it. But that's just how we want it to have somewhere, somewhere nice, you know, somewhere we can really enjoy to live. So you can do things a lot cheaper than what we've done so far. So this is the big one guys. Let's talk about skilled labor. Now, Janelyn would know more about this than me, but skilled labor in the Philippines. How how do I we navigate this? I'm not entirely this? sure how do we determine if they are skilled laborers. So, do we really have like a standards like do they have certificates that they are a skilled tile worker or or plaster worker? Yeah. yeah. I'm not entirely sure. I think if someone has an experience of doing this and that for over like quite a while and then that makes her makes him qualified to become like a laborer in that specific area yeah but i don't think there is like a specific um qualifications certificates that will really verify that you're a skilled laborer mm. compared to being here in australia you have to have like a certificate that you are qualified a plasterer or or whatsoever electrician so electrician is of course yeah. like in philippines they do have a they qualifications do. but yeah pretty much if you're a helper a laborer you can do if you can do the tiling then you'll do be it. accepted so it's like a more of a 
it's an experience qualification, not so much uh, official training qualification, mm. you'd say. Yes. And see, that's this is where the whole issue arises between communication and cost, redoing work. Um, are they going to be able to satisfy your expectations and do it to a level that you want it done to? The short answer is yes, but you really have to be on top of it. So again, this comes back to trusting the engineer to do what he's Mm. um, employed to do and keeping an eye on things, especially if you don't have a keen eye eye to detail or you're not uh, trade savvy, you know what I mean? Like you don't really, you're not a construction person. You don't work in construction, you know, you're an office worker or something like that. You might not really notice something that's out of line or missing. Whereas with the experience I've had in electrical for all these years in building, um, you know, I can even see in a video in the update that he sends that something's not quite right or can you fix that up and we sort of back and forth between each other and we can, you know, nip it in the bud pretty quickly. Um, And it gets fixed and they're more than willing to do it, which is the beauty of having an engineer. They're not going to charge you that extra every little thing that you change. Mm. Big things, yes, you will, because that's stipulated in the contract. But when it comes to the issue of skilled labor, they can do it if it's been translated properly. If, if you show them how you want it done and um, the engineer is there to also advise, Die. yeah, advise even better ways of doing things, which happened many times with our engineer. Mm. You know, I've even stood back and gone, oh, wow, that's a great idea. Like even the roof of our, our rooftop, mm. you know, I just had a wall there out of hollow blocks. He said, I'm going to demolish that and I'm going to put railings there so you can actually see out into your backyard. And yes, I'm just like, that wasn't it the part you're of a the genius. Plan. Like that, I didn't even think of that. And then when I designed it in Revit and I did the 3D modeling, which mm. check out our video of our virtual house tour that we did, a lot of good stuff in there on how to architecturally visualize your house. And if you guys need any help with that, hey, get in touch. We'd be willing to help you out with that too. So, um, and the rooftop also was the engineer's idea. We yeah, that's true. We really didn't have that thought of putting a rooftop on our house. It was just roof sheets, so we just, yeah. Yeah, but he said that it's a shame you have a good view, so might as well put a rooftop. And he said he'll only do it for like an extra, what, 50,000 or something? 50,000 pounds? 60? 70, sorry. 70,000. Yeah, so in a, that's like not even $2,000 and you get a rooftop, so we're like, would be silly not to you know yeah. like let's just go ahead um so it's all these little things where i personally believe it pays to have an engineer um and finding a building company that you can trust and once you have that that relationship with the person it's primarily smooth sailing from there it'll never be perfect you're always going to run into issues and you're stress. always going to st- have stress you're going to spend more money than what you expect so be prepared for that but guys to wrap up the video um I think those are the main key factors uh, to look out for and beginning in the right place you know find the block of land that you really want Um, give your budget a good 35% surplus (laughs) compared to what you think you're going to spend and um, contingency budget yeah have a content yeah good one good one have a contingency budget um, and really use your own judgment and discernment to see if the team that you're employing is the right fit for you um or you can literally afford if you can afford to go there and manage it yourself you're in your retirement you know you don't have to work anymore do it that way you know you might enjoy you know having a project after you've finished work which is absolutely fine you know that's a really good way of doing things too we've seen many people on youtube do that and have a very successful outcome but for us this is the path that we've chosen and it's it's really looking really looking good. We're very happy with the result, um, more than happy actually. I think I really appreciate I appreciate his work. Yeah, he's been I diligent. do appreciate his work. He's been he's, really diligent. He's been diligent and he was trying to please us. Yeah. So I really do appreciate yeah. his work. Hey guys, sorry about the uh, video cutting there. The battery just decided to die on us um, while we were at the park. So as I mentioned, here is the contract. So you've got witnesses who can sign here, uh, a scope of works article here as well with subclasses that basically outline the entire scope of works. If I go to the main page where you have the contract, the price articles four and five. So here is highlighted the total price of the contract right there. And then in here it stipulates all the agreements 
as it pertains to the stages of payments, as I mentioned before, which is the 30% uh, over three, three stages, and then the final 10% that goes towards the engineer. With 40% of works accomplished, payment of second additional amount of yada, 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 um, and then with 75% work accomplishment, so they always give that little bit extra of accomplishment as opposed to what you pay. So they're always basically ahead of what you're paying for, which you can sort of see there. I'll just hold that up in front of the camera so you guys can see, which is basically the most important part. So you just notarize everything, make sure you document it all. So there's a lot of good things here in these contracts that are legally binding that help protect the both of you. So basically the two most common things you'll find is that if the owner makes any changes that are significant and will incur an additional cost, that protects the contractor. And then of course, if there's anything that's done unsatisfactorily to what you believe it should be, or if you're just dissatisfied with the level of quality, that comes as no cost to you and it gets rectified. So look, that's one of the main reasons and we've of course, we've written and made all our notes all over this as well. Things that have changed and you can see that we've made quite a few annotations. Things have changed throughout the contract and he was very, very accommodating to these changes um, <clears throat> and made it work for us. We made it work for both of us. So obviously it's a bit of give and take here, which is the beauty of building in the Philippines. Um, everyone's very reciprocating for each other's needs. Uh, it's not just like a black and white, whereas this is what you get and up yours like it is in Australia. That's what's in the contract. That's the fine print. You didn't read it. That's on you. Bad luck. And there's a lot more flexibility in the Philippines. You can argue that that's good in some instances and maybe not so good in others. But like I said, for us at this stage, it has certainly worked out and we're honestly, we're over the moon with the services provided. So. Once more, a big thank you to Beespear, owner and operator of BGDM Constructions in Leyte. So guys, I think that just about wraps this video up for today. So if you found this content interesting and valuable to you, um, if we've answered some of your questions, then be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you don't miss out any more videos that are coming up. And we've got quite a few more going on as well. But yeah, guys, thanks for being part of our journey. Thanks for watching this video. And again, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Your support really means the world to us. And we're very over the moon and happy to be sharing this experience with all of you. Guys, take care. And until the next one, this is the Castaway Couple signing off.